Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carmen Blair, the Deputy Director of the San Mateo County Historical Association, and I would like to welcome you to today's Courthouse Docket. Sponsored by Cypress Lawn Heritage Foundation, the Courthouse Docket is a regular series of lectures and performances held here in historic Court Remain. Each month, we like to explore a different aspect of local history. Today, we are pleased to welcome Carolyn Hoskins, founder and executive director of the Dominique Hoskins Black History Museum and Learning Center, located right here in downtown Redwood City. She is going to be sharing with us the origins of the museum and her efforts to educate the community about the rich history and contributions of African Americans. Please welcome Carolyn. She discusses proud, strong, fearless, inspiring, the story of African Americans through our history. explain to you how the Dominique Hoskins Black History Museum started. Uh, in my wildest dreams, I never thought about trying to create a museum. And I named the museum after my grandson, Dominique. And Dominique was going to school in Belmont. And of course, during February, which is recognized as Black History Month, and we had to do another report. And so we had did two reports on Dr. King. And so he said to me, Grammy, I am not doing another report on Dr. King because I know everything there is to know about him. So his question was, Weren't there any other famous black people that did anything? And so I thought about it and I said, well, Dominique, there are so many people, even people that Dr. King admired. So we started this just as a little school project at Central School in Belmont. Then other schools heard about it, so we traveled up and down the peninsula. But as you see today, through all of the 30 years of going up and down the peninsula here in San Mateo County, we are so proud to say that with the help of Senator Josh Becker, and the state of California, we were awarded a $2 million grant to find a permanent location. So that is what we are working to do here in Redwood City at 890 Jefferson. So the Dominique Hoskins Black History Museum and Learning Center would like to take this opportunity to thank the Historical Museum for inviting me to share my history of African American world history with you today. We are a race of people that are unstoppable, proud, strong, fearless, and inspiring. From the history of slavery, Jim Crow laws, lynching, and segregation, we have helped to build America. On the backs of slaves, the White House of the United States of America was built. The People's House. Benjamin Banneker helped to design and build the White House, a slave. Just think of all of the inventions that are used all over the world that was invented by black Americans. A race of people that it was illegal for them to learn to read and write. But thanks to them, we say, we appreciate you and we thank you for the traffic light, gas mask, toilet, cell phone, blood plasma, computer, refrigerator, potato chips, golf tee, 
hairbrush, folding chair, sofa, shoes, and the list goes on and on. Even today, in 2024, the history of African Americans is still not taught in most schools. We only hear about the history during the month of February, and then we only talk about Dr. King, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, Nelson Mandela, and Malcolm X. Today, let's learn about someone else in education. Booker T. Washington, the slave who put himself through school and in 1881 founded Tuskegee University, which my uncle graduated from that school. Politics, <coughs> Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman in the United States to run for president in 1972. The Wild West Cowboys. Did you know that 25% of the Cowboys were black in the West. Sports. Ruth Foster started the Negro League Baseball in 1920. Black actresses. Cicely Tyson was the first black actress to win an Academy and Emmy Award. Singer Aretha Franklin who won 21 Grammy Awards, and she was known as the Queen of Soul. At the Black History Museum and Learning Center, our object is to create a path for positive social interaction and outreach. Learning Black history can be interesting and rewarding for the entire family. America is a melting pot of people from different ethnic backgrounds and cultures. Every person in this country should be proud of their heritage and should celebrate who they are and where they came from. It took more than just one race to make America great. I am a proud African American woman who celebrates the history of my ancestors, who recognize the sacrifices their lives to stand up to the injustice in a segregated society. Not only should we recognize African American history in February, but all year long to reflect on how far we have come as a nation but the great challenges that still remain. When you have some states that are banning black books and telling you that blacks benefited from slavery and trying to erase the history, then we still have a big problem in the United States. We must not forget that all races of people marched and died with Dr. King for the injustice that they saw. So we must continue to pass down the great history of extraordinary leaders that paved the way for us. Senator John Lewis, Fannie Lou Hamer, President Barack Obama, Madam C.J. Walker, Satchel Paige, Megar Evers, George Washington Carver, Michelle Obama, and many others. Unfortunately, too many people, especially our children, do not know the extraordinary contributions African Americans have made throughout our history. So I encourage you to come and visit the Dominique Hoskins Black History Museum and help us to continue to hand down the history. So I thank you again, and if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to try and answer them for you. I'm gonna, how did you decide what to collect? Well, 
what I wanted to do was to make it where we get rid of the stereotype that African Americans only are successful in sports and music. So when you come to the museum, you will see over 200 different categories of things that African Americans not only participate in, but excel in. And one of the things that we really do when we first walk into the museum is to learn of the history. Every race and nationality has something that they're not proud of, but you learn from history. And so the new generation will say, we're going to do better. So when I started collecting, and it was just really like a snowball because it kept growing and growing. And the building that we're in is almost 22,000 square feet. And we could fill that whole building with nothing but music of African Americans. So this is why it is so important that when you leave the museum, you are going to learn something that you had no clue about. Well, I have more questions, but are there questions from the audience? <laughs> What are your hours? We are closed on Mondays. We're open Tuesday through Saturday from 12 until 6, and on Sunday from 12 until 5. And we do have uh, schools that have come to visit, and we were very fortunate that uh, Sam Tram came to us to become a partner, and any school or organization that would like to come to the museum, you can call Sam Tram and they will put you in touch with the lady that's in charge, and Sam Tram will pick up the cost of the school children or group to come to the museum. So we're very, very excited and very grateful that they're able uh, to do that. And what we really try and do with any organization that wants to come, uh, we will work with them if they want to come like at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, since we don't open until 12, we are very flexible uh, in trying to be able to do that. Um, because my main goal is to get you into the museum. Laura. First of all, you are a wonderful speaker. It's very clear, for, even with my hard of hearing, to hear you. So I, I love that. So I'm wondering, do you have a number of people who are volunteers who help you to man those many hours that you're open? We are always looking for volunteers, and which is so amazing, which I have learned so much from my volunteers, and people that do volunteer always want to volunteer more than once. And we do have, uh, you'll see, on, if you pick up one of the cards there, uh, where you can go to volunteer, and you pick your time, your date, your hours, because we always have things going on. So we leave it up to when you are available to volunteer. And you meet such very interesting people. And plus, the things that you see, which I always say, uh, everybody has a story to tell. I'm just here telling my story. And I invite you to come to the museum and share 
your story. Uh, are you familiar with Stuart Coxley? Yes. Yes, I, I would think he would be a very good person to corral more volunteers as well. He knows a lot of people. Okay. If, are there particular objects in the collection that resonate with you more than others and the, or the stories that they tell? Um, I think out of everything that's in the museum, um, the section on inventions, uh, because African Americans were always brought up to believe that they did not contribute to America and that they were uneducated. Uh, George Washington said that African Americans were illiterate and had a smell. So you grew up listening to all of the negative but then to be able to research and see the history and talk to people to know that the things that were invented or things that everyone all over the world uses. So you stop and think, where would you be if you did not have these? And to be able to still know that we're very thankful for historians within the last 20 years to have started to research. And of course, to know that a lot of things that African Americans did not get credit for, that other people took credit for. Because of course, at that time, it was illegal for them to get a patent. And especially, there were so many inventions by African-American women. And it wasn't until 1827 that women were allowed to even get a patent. So that section and the section of First Lady Michelle Obama really stands out to me and especially it gave you an opportunity because so many people questioned why was everyone so excited about this election and about an African American becoming president. But through history you have to go back to realize that you had nothing but white Americans as your leader of the free world. And out of them, you have seven presidents that owned slaves. And so it gave you an opportunity to know that it's the character of a person that anyone can work hard to become president of the United States and to have a first lady that educated everyone about the challenges, especially of young girls and the importance of an education. So I am so proud of all of the history that she gave then and that she's still giving today. Megan. Carolina. Uh, can you share a little bit about your school program? Um, what grades do you see the most often? What do you share with them? What are things that they're most interested in? Um, you mean the school ladies that comes to the museum? Well, you know, to me, it's like we had um, in Belmont um, preschoolers that came. And I just educated them a little bit different. 
I don't think that you're too young to know that we're different, but we're all the same. And the number one thing that we want to try and promote, it doesn't matter the age, and that's to just have respect for each other. So we showed a movie and we played games and uh, drew pictures of Ruby Bridges and other people. So we welcome, you know, all ages to come to the museum. Uh, what we do try and do is like working with the teachers. We like to know ahead of time uh, the ages, and then we like to plan uh, to do like a scavenger hunt so that it's certain things that they will look for, and we try and provide them with material that they take with them so it's not just a one day thing. So, all of the contributions that's made to the museum. It goes back into us buying books and giving material so that we can educate the kids. Um, we do a thing where uh, we have a big section where we give away free books uh, because there again, you'd be surprised as to some of the schools, the sections of the books that they have and there again, not a lot of them are not African American books. Um, you intended to show a video today. Our internet is having problems. Could you tell us a little bit about that video and where it's available if people want to watch it at home? Okay, we have through the museum have been very fortunate. Um, two years ago, we were honored with the Jefferson Award. And so they came and did this video uh, about the museum. And it happened to be where they really showcased on the uh, music section. And that was one thing with Senator Bethel. Uh, he happened to come into the museum when we were honoring 50 years of hip hop. And my goddaughter is one of the first original women of hip hop. And her name is Yolanda Whitaker, but they call her Yo Yo. So she came to support the museum. And it just so happened that Senator Becker had chosen that time to come and visit. And they were just really into, he knows everything about every part of music. And so they knew a lot of the different people. And so when she got ready to leave, she said to him, uh, Senator Becker, I think it's time that you found my godmother a permanent location and not just keep talking about it. And he looked at her and he said, I'm going to do that. And she said, well, I'm going to keep in touch with you and hopefully you will make this happen. So through my 30 year journey up and down traveling, through the peninsula here in San Mateo County. I have met tons of people with financial help that could have helped, political people, you name it, I've met them all. I've heard all their stories and I've given out thousands of cards. And so one night, and I guess now it's been maybe about five months ago, and the phone rang, and I was having a bad day because I needed to find something from one of the storage spaces for the museum, and I couldn't figure out where it was. So I answered the phone, and he said, Carolyn, this is Josh Becker. And I'm like, hello, Senator, how are you? So we exchanged 
all of the political, all of the pleasantries. And so he said, um, I have some good news for you. And I said, oh, great, because right now I can use some good news. <laughs> so I thought that he said he had $2,000 for me, which I said, thank you, because that will definitely help me pay storage fees. And he waited a little bit, and then he started laughing, and he said, I don't think you really heard what I said. And I'm like, I thought I did. And he said, no, I have $2 million for the Dominique Hoskins Black History Museum and Learning Center. Well, I was grateful that I was already sitting down because I probably wanted to spell out. But then when I called my kids and other people, uh, <coughs> wanting them to share within that, of course, nobody believed me. And they kept saying, yeah, right, show me the money. So it was a long time uh, when finally he did the press release and everything. But I say that to say this man is an amazing person. And he really understood the importance of having the museum and having the education here in San Mateo County. So when we did the press release and whatever, and I said to him, there's only one word that I can say or one sentence that I can say to you, and that is, I love you. Yeah. And so many times, you know, we don't share that and let people know how we really care about them. And for the journey that I have taken and for him to really see how important the museum is, is just amazing. So I'm so thankful. So you say a, a, an African American invented the potato chip? I'm sorry. You, did you say an African American invented the potato chip? That's right. We, we got to hear that story. George Crumb, and George. I've had my bag of potato chips already this morning. <laughs> and so that's when I say you just think of all of the things, and and we look at it and we say that education, which is what Nelson Mandela said, is so powerful. Because you have people that are uneducated, that are telling you that they have this big eraser, that they can erase my history. Or you have these people that are sitting at a table that was invented by an African American. They have the fountain pen in their hand that they sign all of these laws that don't benefit everybody, and they use the fountain pen that was invented by an African American. You're on the computer, you're on the cell phone, all of these things that you are using thanks to a race of people that you feel are inadequate or that you feel you want to erase from society. So to me, that just goes to show the ignorance of these people and how important it is to be able to come to the table and to sit down and have a discussion about things that are happening each and every day. Yes, hear your opinion, 
let's hear your story about who you are. And I tell the students, when you're in class and your teacher is talking about a subject and you know that your ancestors took part in that subject, but they are not talked about, raise your hand. Educate your students and your teachers because maybe they don't know. And you do find from my travels within the school system that there are still a lot of teachers that could care less. They make up their itinerary and they stick with that. Then you have other teachers that go the extra mile wanting to educate everyone and wanting things to be good before there's a problem. You know, I say here in San Mateo County when George Floyd died, you have thousands and thousands of people all up and down the peninsula margin. But half of those people had no clue as to why they were marching. They had no clue about the struggle. And if you would ask them today, how is George Floyd's daughter doing? How is the family? They don't know. So what we try to do at the Black History Museum is to encourage people to come to the events that we have and sit down and have a discussion before something happens. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and joining us. And thank you so much for agreeing to come and tell your story today.